Right, we're going to start again. Right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we are on a Friday morning. Uh, Mr. Pauly and I have been uh, figuring out some technological challenges, which we hope we have uh, overcome. Uh, it gives me great pleasure and in, in, indeed an indubitable amount of extreme excitement to uh, introduce you to one of our fantastic bass choristers, the one and the only Mr. Nigel Pauly. Say hello to your fans, Nigel. Good morning, everybody. What a lovely morning it is. Cloudy day. It stopped raining. We're doing well. Yes, absolutely marvellous. So the nor the normal uh, way of things, Nigel, is to say to you, tell us, who are you and what have you done with your life? Off you go. Okay, I'm Nigel Pawley. I was born in a little village, Cambridge, a village called Oakington. I'm the third of three boys. My father worked in the local bakery, set up after the war with a with another chap that's early morning stuff isn't it getting up at um yeah, crazy o'clock i think he started work at three o'clock in the morning <coughs> didn't really doing much good because he ended up uh dropping dead at 39 with the coronary that's young isn't it Close. goodness and uh, i was nine at the time so uh had quite an effect i think i would imagine so yes yeah but i spent my young days the local village school took absolutely no interest whatsoever. In school? In school, not interested in anything. It bored me. Uh. And um, I left there when I was, I think I left there when I was 11, went to, the, went to a village college. Uh, had about as much interest as I'd had previously. Okay. I don't think I ever passed an exam, flying colours anyway, during my school days. You must have had an interest in something, Nigel. Um, well, yes, I suppose I did. Tell us about that. What were you interested in? What it was, I, I, I don't know if I can tell you. Oh, well, what if you could tell me? <laughs> well, it's, it's all, all rather... Um, yes, we're listening. To be honest. Um, Just give us a clue. Well, I used to, I, when I was a kid, I used to run around in the village, chasing rabbits over the fields and so on. Yes. I shouldn't have been, to be honest, and um, we'd visit a few prime orchards on our way round, have a bit of lunch. Yes. And uh, we got chased by a few farmers and so yeah. on. So you're a you're a bit of a naughty boy, that's what you're telling me. Just, just a little bit. Yes. But the thing was, I, ne I never got caught. Well... That's the trick. <laughs> We've all done things in our lives that, uh, had we got caught, it might have turned out very differently. Well, exactly. But um, I, I, was, I was pretty good, to be honest. I, was, I, I behaved myself. Yes, within the, within the law, just about. Yes, yes. I always kept yeah. it within the law. Yeah. As, as, long, as long as the policeman couldn't see me, it was... <laughs> Your version of the law. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> anyway, um, when, after my father died, we, we moved to Cambridge, and um, I went to this, this village college out at a, a village called Impington near Cambridge. Uh -huh. it, it held very little interest for me. I took a lot of interest, I suppose, in metalwork for some okay. reason. I liked um, making things out of a lump of metal. And, um, but I suppose the thing that really got me, I, I met there, the, the mathematics teacher was, um, what was his name? I've got it here. Roger Martin. Now, Roger Martin was a fellow of King's College. Right. And um, he was quite influential to me, really, through the early years of well work shall we say yeah <clears throat> when i left school i wanted to i thought i wanted to work in a shop yes and i used to get a job in a tailors and outfitters in cambridge called w eden lily very posh mm -hmm. and um the careers master at school had said to me well 
nothing much happens. He says, you might get Farmer Giles coming on a Thursday and he'll order a new suit or a new jacket and you won't see him again for another year. Yeah. And it was pretty much like that. And I, I stayed there for about 18 months. And um, So you were doing what? You were doing all the measuring up and yeah, all that sort yeah, of stuff? I'm, everything from measuring a suit to making it. That's a good skill. Someone would come in and uh, <clears throat> they'd want, a, you know, the jacket didn't fit properly or something, so we'd yeah. rip it up and take some stuff in out and do whatever it needed. And um, it, it was all right, but uh, and it only paid three pounds a week and the annual bonus was seven pounds. Right, okay. I wanted some money in my pocket. You wanted, had, you had a higher ambition than that. But you must have met lots of very interesting people. Oh, I did, yes. Um, particularly local businessmen, because um, yeah, they were the ones who had the money, obviously. Yeah. It, it wasn't a, you could You could come in there and buy three handkerchiefs, and I think they were about six pounds then. Goodness. Extremely. Just it's not on. Yeah. Um, I remember the uh, constable coming in to buy an overcoat, a crumble mm -hmm. overcoat, and... That was something like 45, 50 pounds, something like that. You were, that's quite high end then. You were right yeah, up at the, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, some people came in there to have a suit, which had been made in Savile Row. Why they didn't go back to Savile Row and get it made properly, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, now you can have it made in, made in Japan for nothing. <clears throat> well, you know, it's a bit like this virus, isn't it? Made in China, so it won't last long. <laughs> <laughs> so it does. Yeah. Us know. But um, anyway, um, after I left the shop, I went to, to do an apprenticeship with British Gas. Okay. Uh, which paid about five times as much as I was earning in the shop. And uh, while I was there, I, I went into my first marriage. Yes. I, um, I quite like wedding cake, as you'll find out. <laughs> So, um, right. anyway, we'll just let that evolve. <laughs> yeah, well, she was number one anyway. She's a very nice person. Yeah, well, you have to start with number one. <laughs> yeah, that's the best place, isn't it? Um, what first attracted you to number one, do you think? Uh, she looked like Liz Taylor. Okay, so it was all superficial then. <laughs> she really was. She really was a looker. She was a looker, right? And, um... So I suppose I didn't look quite far enough, shall we say? <laughs> but, um, well, meaning what? Meaning? <laughs> meaning there's more, more to beauty. Beauty is more than skin deep, do they say? Yeah, but we have to experience that in life before we realise that's true. <laughs> we do. We do. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, with with the apprenticeship, they wanted to send me to school. Oh, I don't fancy that. However, I went to the. Cambridge College of Arts and Technology. Yeah. On six months block release. Um, it's part of the university, but it's not, I can't say exactly that I went to Cambridge University. Right. I did used to know the places like the back of my hand. But, um, nice part of the world. Yeah. Yeah, it's lovely. Although when you live with it, you don't appreciate it. You don't. You well, don't that's so often the case. Yes. That's the problem. Um, <laughs> anyway, I. I I took a lot of interest again in mathematics. Okay. Doing this block release. And um, after I'd been going there for about three, three years, something like that. Right. I, I bumped into um, Roger Martin one lunchtime. The Your ex math teacher. teacher. Yeah. And he invited me to lunch. One day he said, "Come along to lunch. So just let me know when you're coming, and uh, there is someone I'd like you to meet." Yeah. Fair enough. So um, I went along a couple of days later. The porter just happened to be my father-in-law, porter of King's College. Oh, okay. That well, that's handy, isn't it? And um, so I passed on a message through him, and um, I went in. Uh, my best t-shirt on and best pair of jeans, you know how it is. Yes. In those days, it was a shirt and tie. And combed your, combed your hair. Did you have hair in those days? I had hair. Got I any pictures? 
Have you got any pictures of your runabout you could show us? No, no, I haven't. Uh, yeah, I think you have. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Okay, we'll have to come back to that. There may be other other people who've got pictures that you'd laugh at, but we'll leave. Yeah, them. I've um, I'll get uh, Lisa onto it straight away. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. yeah. In fact, while she's talking to me, I'll text. I bet you she comes back to me within <laughs> two minutes. <laughs> yeah, she's not. She's on the ball with things like that. Yeah. Um, you you carry on. I'll see if anyway. I can get a picture of you to show everybody before the end of this session. <laughs> She, she, might, she, might, she, she might show you one with me wearing a wig. <laughs> I don't. I don't mind. I don't mind. Anyway, got I, any uh, pics of your dad? <laughs> I went to this lunch, and um, there was another gentleman there. He's, he's, he was introduced to me as Sir Frederick Drayton Porter. Okay. What do you do? And um, we're sitting there chatting away. I said to him, what, uh, you, you're a college professor or something? He said, no, I'm the chief constable. Right. Oh, right. So we had a chat and he, he talked to me about joining the police force. <clears throat> Never even thought of that because um, I said, you have, to, you have to have brains for that, don't you? He said, no, no more than you've got. And, um, he said, a lot of common sense and um, a savvy. Fair enough, I'll think about it. Okay. And then, yeah, I ended up, I, I got a divorce, <laughs> which was inevitable. How long were you married? Is this, this is number one? Well, that, time, that, was, that was four years. Okay. And um, <clears throat> contacted mid-Anglia police, as it was at the time, and said that I'd like to join. And we went through all the rigmarole and... Um, I needed two references. Well, well, one came from um, what was his name? Wilkes, Professor Wilkes. He he developed the food for the space people in the rockets. Oh, okay. You know, food in a tube, basically. And uh, my mother used to clean for him his house. Mm -hmm. So um, he gave me a reference, and the other reference, funnily enough, came from the chap who'd been in and bought the cro the. Crombie overcoat at Eden Lilies, the former chief constable. Okay, great. I also used to clean for. Yeah. When I eventually went to the police force, met the training officer, I like your references. <laughs> I hadn't seen them. Right. And he said, well, you couldn't get two better ones. So that was that was good enough. Yes. Um, I went to see uh, Roger Birch, who was the assistant chief constable at the time, he, uh, he basically said, yes, okay, you can join. And, um, to a training school called Einstein Hall near Oxford. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's Churchill's birthplace at ben Blenheim. And for the first three weeks, I hated it. Did you? Never had any discipline in my life to speak of. Ah, uh, of course, this is taking you back to school. Are you in a... Yeah, yeah. And anyway, three weeks went by, and I thought, right, do I come back on Monday or not? And came home, had a few uh, a few pints of beer over the weekend with my mates. Yeah. Decided Sunday afternoon, right, I'm going back. I'll, I'll make something of it. Okay. Which I did, and um, you come out there with flying colours because. Uh, as you may have gathered, examinations didn't really show. Uh, yes, not, not your fault. For me. But um, even though I cite myself, I could tell if someone was lying. Okay. I knew right from wrong. I, I, I knew the definition of um, most of the offences that uh, people were likely to get up, with, up to. Anyway, they posted me to Peterborough. Right. And. Having never been to Peterborough in my life, um, it was a bit strange. Walked out the first couple of weeks with a with a, a PC, and uh, then they sent me out on my own, um, which was okay. I was enjoy it. Yeah, talking to people. Exactly. Yeah, and and I imagine um, you were very uh, personable. Police oh yeah, I, I like to speak to people. I didn't care whether they were villains or whether they were the, the town mayor. I'd, I'd chat to them, and uh, that that would be that. But um, 
there were some different sorts around Peterborough. I'd, I'd, I'd hide, I remember one evening, I was still in a shop doorway and I heard this um, group of lads coming up the street. And um, I looked out and saw there were three lads, all a little bit worse for wear, I believe. Right. <laughs> uh, I just happened to glance the other way and there's a chap walking down Long Causeway in a kilt. Yes. Galia, and I should think he'd had a few. Um, anyway, I thought, I know I can see what's going to happen here. So these three lads, they all started taking the mick out of him. Yeah. Um, I thought, well, I'll, I'll just wait here and see what happens. And these three lads are suddenly laying on the floor, and this chap comes wandering past me. Right, he floored them. He might have done me a favour there, mate. <laughs> oh, he said, there, nothing, nothing. Yeah. And it was like certain members of the choir um, had a lifetime in things like the SAS, I suspect. Yeah, yeah, we know who they are. We, we can't Doing mention things them, probably. You, you won't get much information out of them, I'm sure. No. But um, anyway, on, on the one week of mornings, six to twos, going in Long Causeway, and I saw this man coming through the town, so workman of some sort. Mm -hmm. And every morning he'd go past and look at me, watch, 11 o'clock. Right, so the following week, I'll back on nights, on two, ten, night, nights. On. And um, during the night, this white van comes through. Okay, same one. I thought, that's odd. You know, so I, I, I let him go a couple of times and then I thought, right, I'm, I'm having him. So I, I stood out in front of him and flashed my torch. You know, he could have just accelerated and left me for dead. Yes. He pulled up and um, you know, the usual thing, who are you, where have you been? <clears throat> um, he said, I, just, I, I work on a farm. He said, I've just been checking on the, the barns, to make sure they're locked. Right. That stinks to high heaven. So I said, can I have a look in the van? He said, yeah. So we opened the back of the van up, totally empty. Right. Oh, all right then. Okay, I thought, on your way. A couple of weeks later, there I am, stood on the corner of the Cathedral Square there. Mm -hmm. On comes this white van. What's 11 o'clock? Oh, that's good. Right. I wonder what he's doing. So I pulled him up. Yeah. I said, can I have a look in the back? He said, well, no, not really. I said, well, I'd like to see what you got. And so we opened the door up, two shotguns, and the pheasants everywhere. Oh, right. Ah, oh, brilliant. <laughs> so he was knocking them off at night and shipping them through the town in the day. Yeah, yeah, poacher. Yeah. Um, so that, that, that was quite interesting. I got a... a Pat on the back for that from the yes. commander. Good, good work, Wally. But, um, yeah. yeah. But then, um, actually, my first arrest in the job was on the roof of Peterborough Cathedral. Goodness, right? They, what were you doing up there? Well, they surrounded the place with scaffolding to do some work. And, or oh, one o'clock in the morning, we got a... <clears throat> from Bill Westwood, Bishop Bill, as they called him. Right. Always good for a cup of tea and a drop of scotch. And um, he said, there's someone up on the scaffolding. So they radioed me. I walked down there and saw this chap up there. I said, what are you doing? He said, don't come near me, I'll jump. Right. So I'm promptly walking towards him. And um, I, I realised that something was, uh, was wrong. It probably mental health, which it turned out. Yeah, yeah. Um, Bishop Bill, he says, come on, he says, there's a way we can go through the church and up onto the roof without going near the scaffolding, mm -hmm. which we did. And we, I'll tell you what, you don't realise how big that building is until yeah. you're up at the top. The roof. Oh, it's huge. And uh, anyway, this, this young lad was up there and he was in a bit of a state, so we brought him down. But uh, yeah, that was that was my, my first ever arrest. Yes, well, that's that's quite uh, um, uh, when you're when you're up high like that, it must be quite terrifying, I would think. Well, yeah, because he he could have jumped at any time, and yeah. I obviously didn't want him to, and I certainly didn't want him taking me with him. Oh. So uh, I chatted to him and um, calmed him down, and we we actually sat there and had a cigarette together. Right. And um, he was all right. We we got him down, and uh, we were shipped off to. A, 
a mental hospital. Ah, okay. Mm. And what what sort of age are you at this point, Nigel? At this point, I was about twenty-two, I would think. Okay. So I was, uh, yeah, because I only did four and a half years in a job in total. Right. Um, what do you do next then? Well. From while I was in Peterborough, I, I found even though I could chat to them, I wasn't getting anything out of them. I was getting nothing back. Right. Local knowledge wasn't coming to me. Okay. So I did the driving courses, or any driving course that came along, I stuck my name on it. <clears throat> but eventually, I decided that I wanted to, to move. Fine. Uh, say that again. Wanted to move. I wanted to move, or I would put my resignation in. Okay. So, um, I went and saw the divisional commander. <clears throat> it, well, no, the, the police force has spent far too much money on you. Um, it says you're not being moved. Mm -hmm. so you'll have to put your ticket in. That's what you want. So that's what I did. And uh, I, I had to go and see the assistant chief constable, the chap who'd appointed me at headquarters. And he said, what's the matter? So I, I told him basically what I just said. And uh, he said, well, where would you like to be? I said, well, I'd like to be in Cambridge. I know the city like the back of my hand. I said, I know who's doing what, when they're doing it, and who they're doing it with. Right. Right, he says, you're posted there now. That's for now. Okay, well, like those decision making. Yeah, so I, I made my way over to Cambridge. I had the accommodation, I just stopped with my mum for a couple of nights and um, reported for work <clears throat> the following morning, nine o'clock. Uh, obviously, did a nine to five shift. Mm -hmm. um, and then we started a, a, a night shift, a week of night shifts. And I was paired up with another lad by the name of Bob Bacon. Mm -hmm. Now, Bob, he was known as Rasher. I can't think why. But um, Bob was... Um, we'll, let, we'll let the audience work that out all on their own. <laughs> Bob was um, interested in sort of investigating things and that, the same as I was. Right. Over the course of a week, working together, we took, I think we were 12 prisoners for various oh. things. The first chap, we hooked him off a soil pipe, off a drain pipe on the back of the house where he was looking through the bathroom window. Oh, okay. A little bit of um, what's called? Bit peeping of... Tom, we used to call that. Peeping Tom. And anyway, we had people nicking cars and uh, stealing stuff. And... Plenty of work for a policeman to get his teeth into. Exactly, exactly. Um, you wouldn't believe what Cambridge was like at that time. Anyway... Um, after about three weeks working there, they asked me if I'd like to go and work upstairs in CID. Okay. I said, yeah, I'd, I'd love to, but uh, obviously I'm still a probationer. I said, well, that's all right. We can uh, we'll use it as your attachment. Okay. So to CID. <clears throat> uh, this was just after the Cambridge rapists had been caught. Right. He wreaked havoc for two and a half years. And we knew who he was from day one, but proving it was a different matter. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And um, so there I was in CID, just given a piece of paper with a name and a crime on it and, you know, go out and solve it. Yes. That must have been very interesting. It, it was because um, it... it <laughs> I remember the first time they, they gave me this, it's what they call an action. When there's an in inquiry, when there's an investigation going on, they gave me this action. And it literally was um, a, a man by the name of Jim who, who drinks in such a pub. Right. Talking about X, Y, Z. Yeah. So I got myself down to this pub and sat and had a pint at the bar. This chap came in and rabbit, rabbit. So, um, I said, you know someone with the name of Jim? That'd be me. All right. Said, yes. Only Jim in here then. He said, yeah. I said, well, I told him who I was, what I did. And um, I said, I've been asked to come and talk to you because you mentioned something about something that happened. Yeah. Oh, yes, he said. And, and he, he told me quite a bit. So I said, that the best thing we can do is you come down to the Nick in the morning. We'll make a statement and uh, blah, blah, blah. Right. 
Um, I didn't even know what the actual crime was at the time, but it, what it turned out to be a murder. Oh. He just knew someone who knew someone. That's all it was, basically. Okay. And over the course of 11 months in the force area, we had nine murders. It's a lot. All very interesting. Some of them were straightforward. You know, the, um, one afternoon I picked the phone up in my in the office and um, it was the front desk. They said, there's a chap down here. He said, he just murdered his wife. She's uh, laying on the hall floor. He said, you'll have to go in the back door. We've got the keys. Right. All on my own, no experience really. So I went down and had a chat with this chap and he told me um, who he was and so on. And I said, is your wife's name X, Y, Z? He said, yeah. He said, everyone knows her. He said, especially men. I said, well, yeah, I do know her. I said, not from that point of view, though. I said, I'll just know her from having right. seen her about. Yeah. And um, to say she deserved what she'd got is, is obviously very cruel, but she did. Oh, controversial. <laughs> yeah. We, we went round to the house, myself and the inspector and everyone else, and... Uh, went in the kitchen door at the back and there she was laid at the bottom of the stairs in front of the front door and she got a carving knife literally bent up all through her. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, it was a mess. Right. Anyway, I think we might need to move on off this. <laughs> that was just one of those things. You're, you're um, <laughs> goodness. But, um, I'd been in CID for about a month when they asked me if I'd like to join the drug squad, which was being set up. And the, um, the superintendent who was going to run it was from Special Branch. Uh -huh. We had a Special Branch section in the NIC. And um, so we all had a meeting and he told us what we were going to do, what we were going to look for, blah, blah, blah. And I worked very closely with him over a couple of years. And following... Um, <laughs> Following what can only be described, described as an incident, and that's as far as I'll go, walked out of the job that, that morning. Right. So that was quite a dramatic incident by the look of your face there. Very. Yeah. This must, this, this, I mean, I don't want to upset you, but uh, this, this has clearly impacted you significantly. Oh, yeah. 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 So how, in, in total, how long were you uh, in the forest then? Only, only four and a half years. Right. Okay. Um, and then I, when I left, I went back to my, my trade of gas fitting. Right. And, um, I went to work for British Gas for a couple of years and didn't like it. Um, in this time, I got married again. This was to Pauline, who's the mother of my children. Yes. And um, we moved to Hertfordshire. Okay. Um, I got fed up with working for British Gas, decided I wanted to work for myself. Mm-hmm. It probably happens to lots of guys, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And obviously the money was a bit better. And I could do what I wanted to do. I ended up uh, installing central heating. I wouldn't like to say how many thousands of systems we've installed. Right. Um, it didn't do as badly. But anyway, 18 years with Pauline, I suppose I've well, had enough of this. That, that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> Along with divorce number two. Okay. Just so that everybody knows, how many are we dealing with here? Oh, only three. Oh, oh, oh three, three, three divorces. Okay. Yes. So anyway, um, <laughs> I carried on with my work and um, I met Mallory, my, my third wife. Um, she lasted 20 years, actually. Oh, that's not bad. Would you kind of, if you average out over the three, the four, the four years, eighteen years, and twenty, average all of that out. They're getting more, aren't they? That's that's uh, not too bad. Have um, you learned your lesson? Do you think? Uh, well, I hope so. I'm I'm still waiting for the decree in eyesight, to be honest. Oh, of number three. Yeah, it's been going on for over a year now, or well, just about a year. Okay. Any particular hold up? Is it just process? Apart from the court having lost the file. Nice. I don't know. I think she is kicking up a little bit about. Uh, oh. There was a fair bit of property involved. All oh, right. I mean, she's ended up, I suppose, financially better off than I am. But who cares? <laughs> What's that phrase? You'll like this phrase. It's a, it's um, the Rod Stewart phrase. Do you know what I'm going to say? No, go on. 
Uh, it says, what I need to do is to find a woman I really hate and give her a house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Cut all like the cut the cut the twenty years out of it. Just give give houses yeah, away. That's it. Yeah, just give it away in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, well, so anyway. so stuff happens. So, how, how did you end up career-wise? And are you retired now? Oh yes, oh yes. I've, I've I've retired now. I retired when I was sixty-five. I I ended up in hospital having a bypass. Okay. Um, I said to Valerie at the time I, I, they took me to Oxford, and um, she said, "Have they told you anything about the operation?" I said, "No," but <clears> half <throat> like an hour's enough, and it turned out to be six hours. And I woke up twenty-four hours later. Gosh pipes and wires hanging out of my body left, right and centre. Yeah. And, and physically it took me about a year to get over, but now I'm, I'm fit as a fiddle. Um, then of course I, I was told by my son-in-law at the time, he says, Northampton Mail Boys Choir are asking for people to set up a choir for... Ah, okay. I thought, you know, I've always liked singing and I'd love to join a choir. Great. I rang John Waller. <clears throat> And uh, he said about going to the rugby club. I said, well, I can't make that. I should be in Cyprus or Egypt or somewhere like that. Yes. And uh, so I came the first time down to Kingsthorpe. Okay, yeah. The first evening there and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Got straight into it. And then the, I think the following week we were separated into base. And, um, yes, all that malarkey. Yes. Yeah. But uh, I've enjoyed every every minute of it since I joined. That's good. That's good. And... Um, I don't intend to give it up by any means. Good boy, good boy. You're a good bass. You learn your yeah. part as well. well I, I do. It, mostly. I do find it difficult at times. Um, I find it easy if I sing a song that, I, that I've heard before. Yeah. Guys and dull stuff. Um, where, what's, what's it called? Where, um, <coughs> anyway, the songs we're singing in it, most of them I know. Right. Um, I enjoy um, things like stars. Yes, now, stars to me has been a favourite of mine for I suppose ten years ago. I first heard it. Oh, okay, by Philip Quast from the um, Low Miserable tenth anniversary, I think it was. Okay, the anniversary concert. I play that almost every day because I love to sing along to it. Okay, brilliant. Well, that, brilliant, as you know, that, that came along easily. Um, I think until I hear you sing is the is the nicest song I've ever heard. Right, love that. It is beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but my problem at the moment is my teeth. Yeah. Back in February. Are they your own? No. Oh. Back in February, I had all the top ones removed. Right. Implant in there. They're all implants. Yeah, up the that, top. Woo. I'm having some on the bottom as well. Funnily enough, I'm seeing my dentist on, on Monday. That's a major, uh, if you don't mind me saying, that's a major dental intervention. It, it was a major intervention. It's certainly a major intervention on my wallet. <laughs> they look beautiful. You get what you put. Well, these are only temporary. All right. Well, <laughs> go closer to the gum and so on. But they're, they're only held in by about three screws. On them. <laughs> and they're, they're as solid as a rock. But the trouble is, as I said to dentist uh, a couple of days ago on the phone i said i'm, I'm slurring my words and i'm I'm, whispering and I'm speaking oh okay i tend to spit a bit when i'm speaking he said well, that'll all go he said, he said what you're trying to do at the moment instead of talking through your lips he says you're trying to bring the air through your mouth over the top of the implant yeah the implant and the gum so um oh so it's, it says it's creating a bit oh, all right yeah, well. uh, you know, yeah. It, it's it's quite um well, it's funny for me, but it's not for anyone else. I can't say that I've noticed, actually. Uh, well, maybe, maybe people don't know, but it, it, I it, think, you're I mean, living. While, 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 we're, while we're singing, you'll, you'll probably have noticed that I never take my eyes off you. I want to know. I, I like timing. I like the timing to be. I know I make the top ups now and again. I'm sure everyone does. <clears throat> but um, your conducting is, is so... Precise, right? So easy to follow. That okay, well that's no good. Make a mistake. Yes. But the funniest conducting thing I've ever seen was last Christmas at the cathedral. 
Who's that chap from the Salvation Army? Oh, oh! Right, tell us that story. Tell. Oh, I couldn't sing for laughing, but he, he, <laughs> he was conducting the brass band. His arms were going literally everywhere. There's no rhythm there. There's you trying to speed. <laughs> I'm trying to speed it up and slow him down and everything. And Lisa, who was at the back of the church somewhere, she was laughing as well. Apparently. <laughs> could see what was going on. Yeah, yeah. That was a mistake, actually, on my part. I shouldn't have tried to speed that up. Because I, I, <laughs> I made the mistake of thinking, surely those players will hear that it needs to go a bit faster and come yeah. with us. Yeah. But what happened was they stayed there, and we we, we started to... <laughs> they, they, never, they never look up at him, and they oh. never seem to follow anything he's doing. So he might stand with his hands in his pockets. Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I hope they're not watching this, but seriously, guys, if you need a bit of help on how to how to, how to use your ears, and music is a dynamic thing, but exactly. oh, so slow. This happens to be a lot in brass bands. They'll they'll play things the wrong speed. Right, I mean, yeah. maybe it's subjective, but I'll think, why are you playing it like that? If you were to sing it, you'd have to breathe there, and you'd have to. Exactly. So they don't. They don't think about that sort of stuff. But that that is a very funny moment. That's the moment that the 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 priest in the cathedral told me off for putting my stuff on. What I didn't know was because you guys had been in situ for a while, and he'd already told people, "Don't put your stuff on the." Can't remember what's called. The, the you know the the the, the big thing at oh, the front. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. There's a word I should know that from my dad's work, but I can't, yeah. I can't remember what's called. Um, He'd already told people off, but I hadn't heard. So I was putting all my music on there. And he came to me after and said, can I have a word, can I have a word? And he brought, took me out the back and gave me an almighty barking. <laughs> and uh, recognising, I, I can be uh, submissive when I need to be, I went, yes, sir. No, sir. Three bags full, sir. I'm ever so sorry, sir. I didn't realise it. But inside I was going, <laughs> And after that, he was as nice as pie. Well, what, what I'm looking forward to, if, if, if it can be done with your suggestion recently, that we could perform with an orchestra or, or a brass band. Uh, or, a, or an 18-piece jazz band or something, something yeah, like that. Yeah, I'm really hoping we can be great. Uh, uh, p uh, pull, pull that off. That would be I'm sure we can get over this COVID-19 some, some... Of course, of course. So uh, let's just, we'll, we'll finish up now. Give us a sense yeah. of... What might be your favourite moment? Uh, obviously, we've had a good comedy moment from you uh, with the <laughs> choir, but a, a favourite moment with the choir and. Uh, it's got to be the Dern Gate on the um, November. Yeah, wasn't that amazing? That was, yes. that was fantastic. It really was good. So, describe what, what does that feel like? Because uh, to people watching, we're on stage, we're doing some stuff, there's a lot, a lot of preparation, a lot of figuring out. You look, you've got an audience of about 1,200 people. What does it feel like? Well, to me, it felt like standing on stage at the Palladium. Okay, yeah, yeah. Standing there yeah. singing, doing a solo. Don't get any ideas in the red there. Oh, well. You're not offering, are you? <laughs> I'm saying nothing. <laughs> No, it it, uh, it really was a, an exceptional. Evening. Yes, that's very good. Well, we hope... concerts are brilliant anyway. And we we hope to do many more of them as uh, try to make them as exciting as possible. Just coming yeah. back to the wives situation, are you on? Uh, what, what's your current status? Well, my, my current situation is I went on a cruise in November last year. Okay. And I met a, a young widow called Joy who uh, most of the choir will be familiar with. Yes. Sometimes she does stop talking. And, uh, she... You are brave. I you? know I'm brave. Yeah. I guess could have gone for the wives, couldn't it? She's about three feet away from me at the moment. Okay. But... Joy, put your face in the camera. Let's have a look at you. She's, she's got a hatchet in her hand, so be careful. There might be... <laughs> right. There she is. Greetings, Joy. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And yourself? I'm splendid, thank you very much. Just give us a, a little bit of a flavour of a, what's life like with Nigel, no, knowing his background and his three wives. I mean, he should he, he should have matured kind of by now, don't you think? <laughs> should have, yeah. But sometimes he can still be a kid at heart. Right, okay. He likes his music. Yes. Um, well, he gets me quite involved with it all now. I'm quite 
favourite. I like dance music, but I'm starting to like blending in now with all this music now. <laughs> okay, where's your where's your from? Where's that accent from? Um, it's from Oldham, just outside of Manchester. Right. Okay. Yes. Up north. Up north, yes. <laughs> no, I'd recognise that it's up north, but I didn't want to place it somewhere in case I, <laughs> if, if I got 20 miles wrong, you might have got upset. No, go, no. Oh, no, that's Bolton. No. Oh, I've been, who's Bolton? I was originally born in Plymouth, but um, my, uh, my dad moved up, and my dad was a petty officer. Okay. We were all nervous, so my dad moved up to Oldham, um, and that's yes. how I got up. So here's a question for you. This is a very unfair fair question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> what first attracted you to the uh, divorcee Nigel Pauley? Um, he was quite the gentleman. Oh, nice work. Gentleman. It might have been the free champagne. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, no, he, quite he, a looker, isn't he? Yeah, he, um, we were chatting and <laughs> the gentleman, um, he knew I were on my own. He sort of like, looked after me. Great. Yeah, and things just went from there, really. Marvellous. And you're you're going to stick with him for a bit, are you? See if he works out. Yes, yes. Yeah. Give him he a chance. Looks, he looks after me very well. Marvellous. Well, I'm, it's been, too much. <laughs> it's been lovely to talk to both of you. I think we're going to finish there, if that's all right with you. Lovely to speak to you. I've, um, uh, Lisa's let me down. She must be working. I, I know she was up early. <laughs> <laughs> she'll get she'll get some I, I want some pictures of you when you're younger that's what I'm looking for uh, I don't think there are any funnily I'll have a look for you Stephen and get some on nice one that's fantastic great to see you both okay look forward to seeing you again soon take it easy Nigel all the best bye now bye, bye. bye.